obviously buying in all sorts of trouble right now, but they definitely have the experience when it comes to this tournament. Not so much Arsenal, but then we're just judging on this season. There's loads of factors coming into play. First of all, your overall view on this before we get into the Harry Kane factor. Well, I think this is an incredible opportunity again. And, you know, you can tie that into the title race, right? Because, I mean, getting through Bayern Munich, regardless of, of what we think of Bayern Munich right now, uh, you've mentioned the experience. You can never put them away or put them aside uh, without actually beating beating them on, on the pitch. Uh, I think the momentum, if Arsenal went through this uh, tie, would be unbelievable. Would have helped, obviously, uh, in the Premier League race as well, because that confidence, I mean, where do you get that? Um, so it's, it's a bar that... Uh, it's been a while, right? I mean, I think it's been like 15 years since uh, since Arsenal were in the semifinals. Obviously, uh, uh, it's been a massive bogey team, Bayern Munich, in terms of Arsenal. I think they've lost to them four times, right? Um, uh, even after the group stages. I mean, they haven't had an easy time with Bayern Munich, but this is not the same Bayern Munich. And 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 uh, this, is, this is a great opportunity uh, 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 for Arsenal. So I fully expect Arsenal... I mean, look, they've shown they're not afraid of anybody. They don't change for anybody. They don't play according to whom their opponent is. They just do the things that uh, uh, that they've got, uh, gotten them to, to the, this level. And, and that's why that progress... Uh, that Arsenal Mika Arteta has made. It's not just in the Premier League. It's showing in the Champions League because it's been a while since Arsenal were in this position. This is all that's left for Bayern, though. And on top of that, the storyline of Harry Kane against Arsenal. So Harry Kane's numbers alone this season, as we know, it's 38 goals in 37 games in all competitions. Then we went to look at him against Arsenal. It's 14 goals in 19 meetings against them. Obviously, we're talking about previous club here. And there was a lot more between these two sides when it comes to rivalry. But this is all that Bayern have got left. These players are playing for pride as well as everything else, Janish, and to stay in this competition. Well, one thing you have to say, at the very least, at least they know Harry Kane, right? So that nothing is going to come as a surprise to them. Uh, and, and that's the way I would look at it. I mean, you know, stats are great. You know, Harry Kane, uh, it's incredible in a way that, uh, you know, there's a very strong possibility that he's not going to win another title. Who would have uh, thought that before? He's doing his job as he did while he was playing for Spurs against Arsenal or anybody else, one of the best uh, out there, uh, one that hasn't won a title. So I, I, I just think that, Normally, going into this game, you would have said that the pressure was on Arsenal, but it isn't. The pressure is on Harry Kane and Bayern Munich and Thomas Tuchel right now. And I would love to be in that situation if I'm Arsenal. All right, let's get to Real Madrid against Manchester City. So many layers to this tie. And obviously, we know what happened last time around when City finally got their way with Real Madrid. In fact, Carlo Ancelotti spoken about what happened in that second leg against City. And he said his side played without courage and personality, and that cannot happen again. But even playing with courage and personality, is it going to be enough for Real Madrid this time around? It could be. I mean, this is one of those 50-50s, right? Because, I mean, it's an, Real Madrid, an excellent team that's kind of trying to get back maybe their best form, very much like uh, Manchester City. These are two different teams, I suppose. Uh, for Manchester City, obviously, you have to reload just a little bit, as they did, in terms of motivation and how you start the season. And uh, uh, that's never a problem. Uh, if you look at for Real Madrid, I think maybe the you know Jude Bellingham story from the beginning and then his injury just coming back. I mean, they, they've had so many issues, especially in the back. They're so of coming back is going to be interesting to see what's going to happen. Obviously, Militao is back. I don't suspect that he's going to be in the starting lineup. The question, of course, is going to be who's going to play next to uh, uh, the warrior that uh, uh, Rudiger is. Is it going to be uh, Nacho or is it going to be Chouameni? That's going to be a big story. But, uh, you know, I you know, the problem is here that there's so much going forward. These teams do feel very, very comfortable in the way in the way they play. So you're talking once again, Manchester City, who would want to dominate uh, Real Madrid, which, by the way, if you look at the last couple of seasons, they did dominate uh, Real Madrid. But, of course, uh, remember those two extra goals in 90-plus minutes uh, that got Real Madrid through, even though they were second best in both legs. And last season, I don't think there was any question that Manchester City uh, were the best team. The, 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 the 
worry I would have against Manchester City that Real Madrid, for a massive club like they are, feels so comfortable playing away from home, playing on the break, being the position of the game. And they both teams have so many game changes, right? Which is so hard to, to predict. Uh, we can sit here and, you know, Vinny Jr. could have an unbelievable game. You know, Jude Bellingham, you see Rodrigo and how much uh, he has developed, of course, that midfield with Tony Cross. I mean, uh, you know, we used to talk about Luka Modric, now Tony Cross, who some thought, including myself, that maybe he's just winding down just a little bit. And look what he's done, not only for uh, Real Madrid, but what he's done coming back uh, to Germany and 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 almost as if he didn't miss a step and he was away for how long? Three years, right? So uh, big players change games, and this is going to be absolutely fascinating because last year I was 100% sure uh, that Manchester City were going to through, uh, get through Real Madrid. This time I'm not as sure. Yeah, Diario has to go with Chouameni with Rudiger, but Chouameni, Camavinga, Bellingham and Vinicius are all one card away from missing mm. the second leg. So obviously that's a big factor. Rudiger, as you mentioned, who'd been a warrior, especially against Haaland, he said it's personal for him when he's coming off against these uh, players and in, in trying to stop them in his role as a central defender. Who goes through the tie, Janusz, this time around? Ooh, uh, yeah, I've been in uh, Manchester City... Uh... You're not going to give me one game, huh, to see who's going to go through. No, I mean, that's, because it, that's, then this makes this piece not as a... As a I know, a, I get it, I get it, I, I get it. I mean, I haven't gone against Manchester City in such a long time. I've predicted that Manchester City were going to win this competition uh, back to back. But I'm going to go with Real Madrid this time around. Uh, you know, the only worry I have is, as you've said, the number of yellow cards. Uh, I Obviously, you know, Ancelotti is going to play his best players. He has to. He has to trust. Uh, uh, they, they're going to be disciplined. There's a good possibility he knows that, that he's going to miss uh, maybe one. But if it's more, then I, I worry. But I... I you know, I sometimes go on a gut in games where I'm not 100% sure because the, there's so much quality on both sides. I think the return in the Bernabeu um, may just be enough and that experience. And I'm going to go against Manchester City for the first time in I don't know how long. Wow. I know we don't hear that much right here on ESPN FC Live. So that's that tight. And then obviously coming up tomorrow, we've got PSG against Barcelona. How are you seeing this one? I see two teams that are kind of giving us hope, right? I mean, we kind of forgotten about them. Uh, two massive teams. I I like what Luis Enrique is doing because this project is changing. I don't know if it's not too early for PSG, but if you look at that side of the bracket, you say to yourself the way PSG uh, have been playing and, and the way that Barcelona has, has been playing as of late, uh, a little bit of a rebirth, right? Uh, at least in the way we think about those teams. So I wouldn't be shocked to see one of those teams in the final, by the way. Um, uh, Luis Enrique has done a tremendous job. You know how I feel about Kylian Mbappé. For me, he's the best player in the world, one that can change the game any second. Uh, um, so, so I like what's happening uh, in, in Paris. I also like what's happening uh, uh, with Barcelona. And by the looks of it, they're going to be getting you know some key players back. Christensen is, is back. Is a possibility. We'll see if he, play, if he plays. Frankie De Jong, another player, Pedri. Uh, so, so even without those key players, and after Xavi. Uh, has said that he's leaving. Now everybody's <laughs> talking about him possibly staying. So uh, this is going to be very, very tight. Um, and again, you know, the story, of course, of Luis Enrique in Barcelona, Usman Dembele, uh, okay. who's been, I think, growing up, I would say, not growing, but growing up in front of our eyes because we've all had questions about his discipline, about his state of mind, about his mentality. And even though statistics uh, don't tell you that he's had a great season, what he's got, like one goal or something like that. But what he's done in creativity, how unselfish has become. I've looked it up, I've looked it up and he's one of the best in Europe in, in goal creating chances. I think he's got 18. Uh, I, I think he's been a, a breath of fresh air. They do have an issue on the right hand side because uh, Ashraf Hakimi is out. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what Luis Enrique is going to do uh, because I think that's, uh, you know, that's always going to be a, a key. Uh, again, you're going to ask me who's going to get through, right? I like home side, so I'm, I'm going to stick with Barcelona. Okay. Did I ask you who gets through the tie of Arsenal Bayern? I'm sorry? Did I ask you who gets through the tie of Arsenal Bayern? Uh, no, you did not. And I'm going to go with uh, Arsenal. 
Arsenal. Okay, so we've got <laughs> they've picked Arsenal, uh, not Man City, when it comes to Champions League play. This is uh, this is the moment. I mean, as we've said, it's a little bit different in the Premier League, right? Because there are three teams involved, and of course, there's still so many games, and and to navigate through that, it's not always uh, easy and logical, as we said. But here, uh, with this Bayern Munich, I, I look. I think this is a rare opportunity for Arsenal to continue this progress on the, under Ateta to get finally uh, to the semi-final after 15 years. It, this is one of those things that I think if Arsenal do their job at home and win, any sort of win, and then go away and maybe score a goal, I think the heads will go down. I mean, the psyche, the psyche of Bayern Munich is so low that any negativity within the game, I think, you know, I'm still surprised in a way that Thomas Tuchel is there. I would have made, uh, I would have made a decision because they just, they just need it. As you said, this is their last possible chance, right? And and knowing that Tuchel is out, obviously players not responding, losing at home to Borussia Dortmund, losing to Heidenheim after they were leading two 0 mm -hmm. It's just, you know, a goal against. And I think all that negative negativity pours down. And and again, two hole for the players is going to be an easy scape, uh, scapegoat. So I think I, I think Arsenal's got to feed on that. All guns blazing, really, no pun intended. If that's a big Arsenal blowout, and sorry, I'm just going to keep going on about this. Just one last question. If Arsenal absolutely blow them away in the first leg, does Tuchel go, even though he's going at the end of the season anyway? I think there's there's already talk. I mean, you know, depending on who you're reading. Vote of confidence. Like, if vote of confidence I, doesn't I, know he's going at the weekend. Look, I'm on, not on the inside. I don't know necessarily why they haven't done it there's talk about middle close or anybody else i mean what a winner what a striker i, I mean they don't need a manager they just need a fresh <laughs> page right? Be, because because for a player i mean Tuho has taken a lot on himself and deservedly so right i mean he didn't deliver uh with a good team but i i, I think you know it's a massive cop out uh, for bayern munich and their 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 players uh, because there's there's still enough talent there to be so much better uh during this season i'm not talking just champions league so it's a massive cop out that i promise you players will absolutely uh use they have been using it because i am i don't understand how this is on Tuchel. say the game against uh, heidenheim how is that on two hole? It isn't, right? It's a lame duck right there, and I just don't get it. I I, I would have gone in there and said, Thomas, we just have to do it because maybe, just maybe, uh, uh, players will respond to that. And and so I don't understand it. So I, I think this may happen even if Arsenal wins 1-0. Uh, uh, that that may be just be psychologically. I don't know if that's going to be enough, but 2-0 certainly should be, should be enough for, for Arsenal to go through. OK, we're almost out of time. So rather than a breakdown, tell us who goes through between Atleti and Borussia Dortmund. Uh, Atleti, who's got the second game? See, I forgot. Um, First no, game's at, at the Metropolitano. Oh, the Metropolitano. Oof. I'm going to go with Dortmund here. Uh, and it's not simply because the second leg is at home. I, I just think that there's something about both teams, by the way, in the Champions League, right? You you kind of, it's easy to forget them, but they, they find a way, no matter what happens domestically, they do have the know-how. They do have the experience. I, I like what's happening at Dortmund uh, as of late. And, and I think Dor Dor Dortmund will just... You know, I mean, that second leg of the Metropolitano, you know how big that is. We saw that, saw that in the last leg. They don't have that, and Dortmund will take advantage of that. <laughs>